The 2018 election is a historic one for black Floridians. But did you know that Florida had black history before this year? Well, Roy Wood Jr. fills us in with another episode of CP Time. Ah, welcome to CP Time, the only show that's for the culture. We're coming to you from Florida, where next week, Andrew Gillum could become the first black governor of the state. If he can pull it off, Andrew Gillum will join a long list of celebrated African Americans from Florida. Black people like Congresswoman Frederica Wilson, a tireless advocate who has worked to reduce dropout rates and who has been a groundbreaking pioneer in hat wear. She has hats for any occasion. The hat for when you're going to church, but then have to go to a rodeo right after. The hat for when you want to tell your enemies, oh, you think you bad? Bitch, I killed a polar bear. And of course, the hat for when you just had to do it to him for no reason at all. Slay, Frederica, slay. But it's not just politics. Florida has been home to some of our nation's great black writers, including Zora Neale Hurston, who has written many moving, inspiring, and life-altering novels that I intended to read one day. Not the least of which is, their eyes were watching God. Which I'm told is a book about a group of people looking up at the sky. Here's a brief reenactment. <laughs> Florida is also the birthplace of black acting royalty like Sidney Poitier. While most people associate him with the Bahamas, the truth is he was actually born in Miami two months premature. His parents were here visiting, and I guess his mother was dancing too hard, and Portier came right on out of there. <laughs> Moving on to sports. Liberty City in Miami, Florida has always been a hotbed of NFL talent, like Chad Johnson, Antonio Brown, and my Uncle Bebo. <laughs> Uncle Bebo would have gone first in the draft in 72, but a gator got his foot. But that's neither here nor there. We got that gator, and he died like a bitch. And finally, you can't talk about great black Floridians without talking about the music. First, there's the rapper literally synonymous with Florida, Flo Rida, <laughs> whose music is loved by everyone. In fact, Flo Rida is the only artist you can hear playing during a drive-by and a spin class. <laughs> it's all about that crossover appeal. But long before Flo Rida adopted his confusing ass name, Miami Rap King's two live crew made true history. Not just because of the black guy rapping with an Asian, but also in the courtroom after they were arrested on obscenity charges. But they defended the right to perform their buck nasty lyrics on songs like Me So Horny, Hoochie Mama, and of course the classic Face Down, Ass Up. And they won the case. And in doing so, they ensured all of our First Amendment rights. And the right to pop that pussy. That's all the time we have for today. From Florida, I'm Roy Wood Jr. And this has been CP Time. And remember, we're for the culture. Roy Wood Jr., everyone. <laughs>